All right, so in the last video, we taught you guys how to find the distance between two points. In this video, I wanna go ahead and show you guys how to find the midpoint between those two points. So if you're, if you're, um, if you're given these two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, it's a really simple formula. Essentially, what you gotta do is you gotta take the average of the two x values, and then also take the average of the two y values, and then your final answer is gonna be another coordinate. So this is the formula. I take the average of the two x values and you take the average by adding them up together. So x1 plus x2 divided by two. And then I'm gonna take the average of the two y values, which is y1 plus y2, and then again divided by two. And then whatever result you get from working all of that out is going to be your final answer. So it's pretty straightforward. So let's just kind of jump into the first example. It says find the midpoint of GH given G is seven negative five and H is nine negative one. Now me personally, I like to go ahead and draw a figure just to kind of see what's going on. So I'm gonna draw that segment GH. I know that G is right here and H is right there. And I know that the midpoint is right there in the middle, okay? It's not as useful for this type of problem, but when we work out some other problems um, coming up, you'll see why that's gonna be helpful. So either way, I know that I have my first point here, x1, y1, and my second point here is x2, y2. So, and one thing I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna go ahead and write out the formula every time. And I'm gonna have it right here. So x1 plus x2 over two, and y1 plus y2 over two. I know, I know it's going to be tedious to have to write the formula out every time, but it's a good habit to build because we're only in the beginning of the course and you already have a few uh, formulas that you should memorize. So best practice is just go ahead and write out the formula before you work out the problems and it's going to help you out a lot, so especially with remembering them. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in these values into the formula. So I have x1 and um, x2 is 7 and 9. So I'm going to add those two up and divide it by 2. And then I have the two y values, so I have negative five plus, and then the other y value, negative one, and divide that by two. And now I'm just gonna work out each part separately. So I have seven plus nine is 16 divided by two. And then I have negative five and negative one, which come out to be negative six when I combine them, divided by two. And then when I work this out, I get 16 divided by two is eight. And then negative six divided by two is negative three. And that's my final answer. It's gonna be a coordinate like I said earlier. So when I work out example number two, this one's a little bit different. It says find the coordinates of A if M negative one, two is the midpoint of AB and B has the coordinates of three negative five. So the whole segment right here is AB. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that just so that we can see what's going on. The entire segment is AB. They say that the midpoint, which is right there in the middle, has a coordinates of negative one and two. And then point B has coordinates of three, negative five. So this, was one of, this one was M. Now, this one's a little bit different because this formula is useful for figuring out what is the coordinates of the actual midpoint of the problem. But this time you're given the midpoint and what they want you to do is figure out what is this other end point A. All right. So, there is a way of using the formula to figure this out. And in fact, that's how most textbooks are gonna teach you. But a lot of us teachers here at Leto, we figured there's a much easier way for you guys to do it. And it's kind of a shortcut. So what we like to do is we like to just go ahead and be organized and draw a nice little table right here. And I know that I'm uh, the like in this table, we're gonna fill out the points A, M, and B. So I have A here, M here, and B there. All right, so I know that M and this first column is gonna be like your X values and this second column is gonna be your Y values. So I know that M has the points negative one and two. And I know that B has points three and negative five. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna try to figure out what is the pattern through addition and subtraction to get from point B to point M and follow that same pattern and continue that pattern to get to point A. So let's start with um, with this side. We have from, how do you, you just gotta ask yourself, how do you get from negative five to positive two? All right, if you think about like a number line, for example, like, you know, if I have negative five and then two, how many spaces do I have to jump to get to, um, to positive two? Or if you can just do that in your head, 
even better. So to get from negative five to two, you know you have to add seven, right? So you're gonna continue that pattern and you're gonna go again and add seven again. So you're gonna end up with two plus seven is nine. All right, and that'll give you your Y value for point A. Now we're gonna go ahead and follow that same pattern on this side, so I'm gonna have, how do you get from three to negative one? Well, in this case, to get from three to negative one, you have to subtract four, and you're gonna do the same thing to get from negative one to the next point, subtract four again. So negative one and negative four together gives me negative five. So this right here is gonna be the final answer. So we know that point A has a coordinate of negative five, and positive 9. All right? So now let's look at example 3. This one says if G is the midpoint of FH and FG is equal to 14X plus 25 and GH is equal to 73 minus 2X, find FH. This is actually a very similar problem to what we saw before with the segment addition, except this time they're going to expect you to kind of draw out the segment yourself. So if I have segment FH, and they have G as the midpoint between those two, right? And then over here they tell us that FG is equal to 14X plus 25, and this one is 73, or GH is 73 minus 2X, right? Again, just like what we did before, if we know that this is the midpoint, then these two segments have to be the same value and we can go ahead and set these equal to each other. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have 14X plus 25 is equal to 73 minus 2X, all right? So now that I have this, now we're just gonna go ahead and do our algebra. So I'm gonna go ahead and move all of my X values to one side and all of my numbers or constants to the other side. And I'm just gonna see, add 2X here, add 2X there. And to get the 25 to the other side, I'm gonna subtract 25, subtract 25. I'm gonna do it all in the same step. So I cancel this out, cancel that out. So 14X plus 2X gives me 16X. 73 minus 25 gives me 48. Okay. So now to get X by itself, I divide both sides by 16 and I get X is equal to three, all right? And again, this is gonna to happen to a lot of students. Please make sure that you read the question. Sure, we got our X value, and, mo and a lot of times back in the day when you were in algebra, that was good enough. But when you read the question here, they're asking you to find FH, okay? So if you wanna know what the value of FH is, then you're gonna go ahead and plug in three into the whole thing. So I'm gonna plug in three into this X for FG and I get 14 times three plus 25. And then I'm gonna plug in three into, uh, into GH as well. And I get 73 minus two times three. Honestly, I don't even know why I wrote this part out. In fact, what we can do, all we have to do is figure out what FG is and then just multiply that value by two. So if I have 14 times three, that gives me 42. And then if I add 25 to that, 42 plus 25 gives me 67. So if I know that FG has a value of 67, well, GH is the same thing as this side, right? So if I put in 67 on over here, right? Then I know that these two segments together give me the whole value of FH. So I know that FH is going to ultimately equal 67 plus 67 or 67 times 2, which gives us 134. And that's our value for FH. All right. So now for example number four. Suppose A is at negative 6, negative 5, and point B is at 9, 4. Find the point C such that the ratio, that's what that little colon means, the ratio between AC and AB is equal to one fourth. So let's kind of figure out what's going, what's going on here visually. So if I were to draw this graph, okay, and I plotted the points negative six, negative five, so one, two, three, four, five, six, so that's negative six and negative five, I've got to label my axes. One, two, three, four, five, down. So we go left, negative six, and down, negative five. So 
There's my point A, negative six, negative five. And if I, if I went ahead and located the other point, nine, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then up four, one, two, three, four, right? This is point B, nine, four, all right? If I connected these two dots, put it this way, right? I have a segment AB. And essentially what they want you to do is they're saying, what is, there has to be a point C of somewhere on this segment that is one fourth of the way from A to B, right? So, I mean, I'm not, I don't really know for sure. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and I'll just kind of say like, maybe that's point C right there. I don't know for sure, but we're gonna go ahead and calculate that right now. The best way of approaching this problem is to kind of think about, well, Let's break, I know, I know that we're, we have a slant here, but let's kind of think about it in two parts. What's the horizontal distance from A to B, right? So there's gonna be a horizontal distance from A to B. Okay, and then what's the vertical distance from A to B? Okay, so once we figure out what that horizontal distance is, we're gonna to try to figure out what is one fourth of this value. And then we're gonna also try to figure out what is one fourth of the vertical distance value, okay? And then we can go ahead and use that and add those values to point A because ultimately we want the ratio to be of AC to be one fourth from here compared to the whole, um, whole segment of AB. So let's go ahead and do that. If I have, um, I'm gonna look at the, at the horizontal distance, which is gonna make me look at the X values of nine and negative six. So you have to ask yourself, how many, how many like points or uh, what is the distance between negative six all the way to nine? So I know that this distance has um, a distance of six. This distance has um, a value of nine. So six and nine all together to get from negative six to nine, it's gonna be a distance of 15 overall. Same thing over here. Now, if I wanna know my vertical distance, I'm gonna look at my two y values, four and negative five. So to get from a, a y value of negative five all the way up to four, I gotta say, okay, well, this has a distance of five, this has a distance of four, so all together it has a distance of nine. So if the horizontal distance is 15 and the vertical distance is nine, I'm gonna to try to figure out what is one fourth of both of those. So we're gonna go ahead and get one fourth of 15. So I'm gonna start with that. So 15 times one fourth, right? And when I put that in my calculator, I'm gonna use a very basic four function calculator. But if I put this in my calculator, what you wanna end up doing if you ever multiply a whole number by a fraction is you wanna multiply this whole number by the numerator first and then divide it by that denominator. So the way I'm gonna do that, the order I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna do 15 times one, and then that value divided by four, and I get my decimal value, so 3.75. So that's, that's gonna be the one-fourth of the horizontal distance, and we're also gonna do the same thing to figure out one-fourth of the vertical distance. So not nine times one-fourth, again, I'm gonna get the whole number multiplied by the numerator, so nine times one, and then divide that by four, and I get 2.25, okay? So now that I know that 3.75 is one fourth of the distance from point A, um, the horizontal distance, and 2.25 is one fourth of the, uh, the vertical distance, and we're gonna use that from, figure that out from point A, we're gonna go ahead and add these two values to um, point A. So my point C, point C, right? We're gonna get the values of the coordinates of point A, so negative six, that's the, that's the beginning point of the horizontal distance. We're gonna go ahead and add that one-fourth value to that. And then we're also gonna get negative five and add the, um, the one-fourth value of the uh, vertical distance, right? And when you go ahead and add those up, you're gonna end up with negative 2.25 and over here, you're gonna end up with negative 2.75. And that right there is 
the point C that you're trying to find. All right. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, just feel free to go ahead and ask us and get started in that assignment. Take care.